So <laughs> thank you very much. I'm actually here, not in New York City, but <laughs> um, my uh, parents would always think that if you didn't want to be anywhere else in the world than where you are, that you were happy. And that's how I feel. So I'm, I wish you all the happiness that I, I feel right now and the, the pride and joy that I feel of being part of this. And Julie, I salute you. We've been partners and best friends, and what a leader you are. I can't see you right now, but I, I know, I know that, that we're communicating. We always will be, so bravo. <laughs> so very briefly, um, 31 years ago, uh, I was a high school teacher in Bedford-Stuyvesant in New York City at Boys and Girls High School. And uh, I was a, in charge of the uh, dropout program. And I was having a lot of problems in the class. Uh, kids weren't into me as, as a teacher. And so in that January of 1982, actually, I asked them, why were you so disruptive and not into the uh, class? And one of them, uh, Jose Ferrara, said to me, he said, well, Mr. Mariotti, frankly, we were, were bored. Uh, I know that's hard for you to believe right now, but... <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I said, was there ever a time, the question teachers always wonder about, was there ever a time when I was a good teacher, when you did like the class? And Edwin Blanding said, you know, the only time that the class spoke to, to me or to us was when we were talking, you were talking about your small business and how you'd bring in ladies' shoes from Agra, India at $5 and you'd add a dollar on for insurance and freight and you'd sell them at $7. That's how I made my living uh, as an entrepreneur in the late 70s. And your container load of sales would be 120,000, your cost of goods sold would be 100, your gross profit 20,000, and your profit after tax about three or 4,000. And that child recreated an income statement that had taken men and women thousands of years to create, <laughs> shown an interest in math, shown an interest in school, and shown an interest in markets. And that's what I've been thinking about and our team's been thinking about for 30 years. How do you teach people that have been left out of the market and how do you teach them about this wonderful thing of ownership and capitalism and how markets can be used to help people. And how do you do that cost effectively so that you can talk to a, a billion kids? And um, uh, it's been extremely successful. I've, I think that Nifty, which I founded in a classroom in the South Bronx seven years later in 1987, and, uh, and now we have 450,000 graduates, we have offices, in uh, uh, 10 countries, and we have teachers in 50 countries and offices here in 11. Ar thank you. Arguably, <laughs> Ar arguably the most successful nonprofit of our generation as far as replication. And I, I just want to say that I'm really, really proud to be a small part of it now, uh, and I think it's, it's really neat. And I want to tell you this, that the story is just beginning, that uh, this concept of teaching uh, young people how to start businesses, how to own assets, how to build equity, and most important, how to own their future time, is an idea I think that will replicate throughout the world, and that someday in my lifetime and in your lifetime, Every child in the world will learn how to start a business before they're 18, and that will be a great thing for, for our, our society. Thank you. Good night. That's my story.